Hey everyone, Metal Shop Steve here. I'm going to uh, give you another album review. We've got a lot of nice uh, new albums either uh, already out that I need to talk about or that will be coming out in the next couple of months. So today we are actually going to talk about an album that came out in November, um, but I still consider it new enough that we're going to talk about it. Um, it's a band that I've kind of had my eye on for a little while. I've been listening to and uh, I enjoy. So here we go. The band is called Crystal Viper. They are a Polish band. Uh, they're a female fronted metal band and um, best way to describe them. Uh, they're kind of melodic. They have some progressive sound to them. Um, just a lot of different things that you can pick out in in the sound and influences. And uh, as I talk about the tracks, I think we'll discuss that a little bit more. Uh, the band is made up of uh, Marta Gabriel. She is the uh, the lead vocalist. She plays guitar, really kind of the, the driving force here. She's the founder of the band. Um, her vocals are, you know, when you first hear them, and maybe by some of the videos you've seen, you think it's going to be strictly uh, kind of this operatic, uh, progressive style of uh, vocal, which it is in some parts, but she also has a lot of layers and a lot of depth to her voice. And she can bring it down into a lower register and give it a little bit of a grit sound here and there. Um, really great, strong vibrato to her voice. So uh, a lot of elements there. Uh, the rest of the band, Andy, Blaze, Eric, and Sid. Uh, so let's get started. Let's go down track by track here. Some tracks I will have more to talk about than others, but uh, let's go Prelude. They start out and it is an actual Prelude. It is just a short uh, little bit of music. It's an intro, kind of a slow build with atmosphere to a little bit of guitar in there. Almost reminds me of if you would listen to, um, you know, maybe uh, uh, Steve Vai or something like that, doing that really atmospheric solo guitar work, which I'm not necessarily comparing um, any of this to Steve Vai, but uh, certainly there are elements which uh, this band should certainly take as a compliment. Um, so we kick into the music with Still Alive, the first actual song on the album, and it just rushes right at you with this churning guitar. Um, Marta's uh, operatic vocals are flying everywhere in this one, and this is uh, kind of, if you've heard this song, which I believe is a single out there. Um, I think there's a video for this one, but uh, it's just kind of introducing you to the band. And it would lead you to believe that the band sounds a certain way all the time, which, as I said, they do not. Great song, though. Uh, it's riffy. There's my word. And a nice open to the album, really. Uh, next up, Crystal Sphere. Uh, and this is, again, a nice riffy start to this song. And this band, for being kind of on the progressive, melodic side of things, really knows how to throw down a solid, uh, churning metal riff. Uh, which I really enjoy. I think that adds something that maybe some progressive leaning bands don't always get. They're always up there, um, you know, noodling around with a lot of different things guitar wise. Uh, but uh, this band really knows how to bring it back down and kind of, you know, fight it out in the streets with the riffs. Um, rapid drumming, progressive, uh, just a good song all the way around. Bright Lights next up <clears throat> starts with kind of an old school metal swagger. And I like that. Uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's not, uh, you know, kind of blazing fast. It's just kind of got this groove, kind of groove metal. Uh, really nice change up from the first couple of songs. Um, and in that, this is where you really first get the taste of what Marta can do with her voice. Uh, she kind of switches it down into a lower register, a little grittier, a little bit of a, uh, you know, kind of a growl there. Not, not a growling in the sense of like death metal growl, but just a little bit of attitude here in the vocals. And this is actually, I have two songs on here marked as my my top two songs, and this is one of them. So Bright Lights, the fourth track on the album, um, one of my favorite songs. The next one, Never Ending Fire, and uh, more lower vocals, lower range vocals on this one, slower tempo. Um, they kind of, uh, this kind of goes uh, album-wise in like ebbs and flows. Um, you're getting uh, I believe tempo changes uh, kind of like waves coming in and out, the tide coming in and out throughout this album. Uh, you're going somewhere musically, and then they switch it up and take it for another couple of tracks in a different direction, and they switch up again. So, uh, again, 
uh, kind of different from that speedier operatic type of sound that they started the album with. Next, uh, similar to the fact that they did a prelude, they do an interlude about halfway through. And this one is just purely, again, kind of an atmospheric, airy um, piano. It's short. It's just a little something to break up the album. If you were going to flip the cassette over to side two or the record over to side two, this is probably where it would happen. Next up, Under Ice. Um, this one, you can really hear the classic metal influences to this song. And as I said, uh, it's more than just, um, you know, kind of one little box that you can put them in. They're, they're kind of all over the place. Uh, I would say that maybe start out, uh, if you want to build the bass, you start out with the progressive sound. But from there, you're stretching out into these other areas. And that classic metal groove, that metal sound is something that they do very well. This is, again, another slower tempo kind of song. Uh, next up, one question. This is my second one on the album that I've marked as my favorite. So my favorite two, this is the second one. It has a blazing fast, and you're going to know why in a sec. It has a motorhead kind of riff to start this song out. It's fast, it's aggressive, it's furious. Um, really kind of uh, high, um, just letting loose of the vocals. Um, I don't know. It's really kind of the perfect song for me on this album. You'd have to hear it to know what I'm talking about, but it's something that some of the, the older metal guys uh, can really do. And another thing that I'm going to bring up here is one of the influences that I heard a little bit throughout that I couldn't really pinpoint until this song was uh, Judas Priest. Now, I don't know if that's technically somebody that influenced them, but I can hear it in everything throughout this song. And thinking back to some of the other songs on here, I hear it as well, and I love that. Um, next up, Tomorrow Never Comes. This is probably, uh, of all the songs on here, the most progressive sounding, the most instrumentally complete. Uh, everything kind of weaves together really well. All of the instruments get their chance to do things and do them really well, just to kind of, um, almost as a show-off piece to show you instrumentally what they can all do, and vocally as well. Just a really complete song. Uh, Tears of Arizona. Uh, this one has kind of moody keyboard piano type of intro. Uh, and it builds. It's a ballad, really. Uh, it's got this beauty to it, um, kind of more subtle vocals. This is kind of the third piece of what she can do vocally, uh, kind of just really bring it down into this understated, uh, subtle vocal for this type of a song. And finally, bonus track on this album. I'm not sure if all the versions of the album have this or not, but uh, this particular um, copy of the album that I have includes one track, a bonus track. It is a cover. It is Dream Warriors by Dokken. And uh, it had been a while since I heard the original, so I went back to compare. And I've got to tell you that I think uh, they do just a really spot-on job of nailing this song instrumentally. Uh, and they're not copying it. It's not sounding like a, a female-fronted cover band doing Dokken. It does sound like a Crystal Viper song, but it also... Uh, you could kind of switch this one out, um, you know, into the, the Nightmare on Elm Street or whatever you were trying to, to pin this down in. Uh, and it goes very well. It's just a really well done cover. One that you, um, I always think of the best covers, you could actually believe that the cover band is the one who wrote the song. So really great job there. And even a little bit vocally here, another tiny little thing that I'll give you is I believe that uh, Marta's voice here reminds me of some of the harder uh, vocal stuff that Hart did. So uh, hopefully that's a compliment as well because I certainly mean it that way. Um, but there it is. That's the album Tales of Fire and Ice by Crystal Viper. Came out in November. I think I forgot to mention the title earlier. Tales of Fire and Ice. Um, certainly one that you definitely want to check out here and uh, you can probably find it all over the place and I will give you some links below. Thanks for coming by.